What is up, sister friends? Welcome to another episode of Heart to Heart with Coach Emily. Today we have a very special guest, the Yang to my Yin, um, Emily Augustine. Um, Emily is someone I recently met this year. I actually had no idea who you were before at LCA. Um, and we just clicked immediately and we um have become really good friends this past year. I'm really excited to have Emily on the show today because Emily has one of the most unique, inspiring, and powerful stories um, here in this space. She is also a fitness coach, but Emily, I always love for my guests to introduce themselves. So go ahead and let the world know who you are. Okay. Yes. So um, I always love to say like me and Emily clicked so well and we are so opposite, like night and day. It's insane. Um, Every time we have a conversation, it's like, well, I don't really agree with that, but I understand your opinion. <laughs> um, so, but for me, a little introduction on me. Um, so my name is Emily. I am in Florida. So I have a online fitness coaching business as well. So it is called RTO Coaching and then MILF in the making. So I just kind of started that one. Um, I have a five month old son, so he'll be six months at the end of this month. So that's a whole new journey new experience for sure um and yeah i don't know i i look at myself as kind of boring so i don't really know what else to introduce myself as um but yeah i'm excited to be here (laughs) emily is the farthest thing from boring um so i will get us started so you can be like what she thinks she's boring the thing about emily you're gonna just find in this episode um you are so humble and you are so like just just accepting of like who you are and your life and you move through things so well and um, you're a very grounded person. Um, so I wanted to kind of start off because I feel like I found this out at NLCA Live, just how unique and crazy your life is in the sense of like from start to finish. Emily is a manifesting generator and it just like fits perfectly from her. So um if I remember correctly, you started off as a hairdresser before you even started this journey to being a fitness coach, correct? Oh, yeah. So I, I mean, I bounced around from a, a dozen things. I got, I got my college degree while I was still in high school. And when I got my degree, I actually was starting to work for like towards forensic science. So I wanted to be like this because I like CSI, you know, I'll be honest with you guys, one of those people. Um, and I wanted to like hunt down the bad guys. And then I realized well, you know, maybe not. So that's why I started my business degree and then started doing hair because I enjoyed like the creative side of things. So I did hair for like three to no, probably about four years. Um, I enlisted into the military. So it's like the complete opposite career. So I quit doing hair, went to the military. I've been in the military since 2018. Um, I fly on C-130s. So I get to like travel a lot i've been to like 39 different countries at this point yeah i've been to so many different places um i mean i've lived basically in italy for about like eight months if i kind of like lump it all together um and yeah then i decided i love health and fitness and i went through my own like journey and transformation in regards to like my weight and just what I thought was healthy and what's not healthy. And then I started my own business and yeah, that's kind of where I'm at now. And I was a business coach. So yeah, I just like dabble into so many different things at one, like at one time. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense too. I'm like, like, (laughs) you're like, I wanted to find bad guys. Like, so you see Emily right now, she's like, it's so bright and sunny and she's so cute. And then she's like, I want to hunt down, hunt down <laughs> guys. And I fly in big planes and she does a lot more than that guys. She doesn't give herself enough credit. Like I said, she's very, very like humble. And, but Emily like does really bad ass shit in the military. She, um, whatever that water tank situation yeah helicopter you train really hard she's also a mom a wife um but also like but also at the same time you do all these things and what I find so cool em is that like you're so um simple at the same time right like you love being at home and watching friends and like so reality how do you- tv baby reality tv all day every day <laughs> like yeah, Vanderpump like rules 
is coming back the end of this month, baby. So anybody who's assessed that show, let me know because we're going to be watching at the same time. <laughs> yeah, weren't you watching like Love Island the other night or something? I love Love Island. I So I'm the weirdest person. Like I love like business and learning. Like I only read self-development books. I only listen to like podcasts. I don't want to say only, but like I started out listening to podcasts that were just like only for brain fuel. And reality TV became just like my, I don't want to say like my toxic trait, but it's just like my getaway, my escape. Like the whole time I was in the hospital, I binged watch Vanderpump Rules. I was on like season two when I went to the hospital. Bro, with by the time my son was a month old, I got all the way through season 10. Like, <laughs> I mean, he was watching it with me. Like, you know, so <laughs> I love reality TV, Housewives. Like that's, it, and yeah, I guess it's kind of weird because yeah, like military, whenever we're all flying on the plane, I just watch the Kardashians, you know what I'm saying? So, and I'm with a bunch of guys and they're like, this show's stupid, but they'll end up watching like Too Hot to Handle and Love Island with me by the end of it because I'm like, it's really good. You should watch it. <laughs> I think though, that's so cool that you, I think it's important that people know that because Emily does run a very successful fitness coaching company. And, um, you know, in our space, you know, this is, you know, what I do is personal development. You also, I mean, fitness and that your MILF program is also personal development. And I think what you do well, M, is kind of like break down the walls of like what personal development has to look like, because like, I have so many girls in energetic scheduling, like when I'm like, what do you do to, what's your downtime? What's your decompression? And they're like, feel ashamed for like wanting to binge watch love is blind or something. And I'm like, do what you got it. There's no rules here. I think you do a good job of like showcasing that. Oh yeah. That is my self-development time all day, every day. Like (laughs) reality TV, my husband, it's funny. If you, if ladies, if you guys have never watched it, and your husband's talking crap, by the end of the season, they will be on board. I promise. It happens every freaking time. (laughs) That happened with me with Austin with Love is Blind because I, you know, Love is Blind came out during COVID and I was obsessed. And then now every season, I'm like, I still got to watch. I got to watch Love is Blind. I got to know, even if it's shitty, I need to know. And Austin always doesn't want to watch it. And then by the end, he's like, got his own opinions. Who's his favorite character? Exactly. Exactly. He's like, wait, wait, wait. So she's with she's with him now? Like what happened there? If I watch an episode without he was, well, I missed the whole thing. So like tell me what happened. You know, Vanderpump rules. He's excited for it to come back. He's like, that starts this month, right? I'm like, yeah, dude. <laughs> That's like me and Austin when I was like, I had never watched Grey's Anatomy, and so I wanted to watch Grey's Anatomy. And Austin was like, It's fine, watch whatever you want to watch. And like now he's like can we put Grey's Anatomy on? Or if I watch an episode without him, he's like, what happened? She did not do that. What? <laughs> or he'll be like, I can't stand Meredith or whatever. Like he has his own opinions on everything. So I find it so funny. Oh yeah. If you, um, I don't know if you've ever watched the show like Lucifer. Have you ever seen the TV show Lucifer? Oh, Austin loves that okay. show. I love that show. And James was against it because of all like the drama and the romance. And he's sitting down <laughs> And he'll start to watch it with me. And he's like, I just watch it for the fighting scenes. But then he gets into all the romance and stuff too. And I'm like, bro, he does the same thing with Love Island. He's like, I just want to watch them fight. I'm like, sure you do. Sure. (laughs) James, James. So what do you think it is about like watching reality TV? Or I know you love the show Friends and things like that. That kind of helps you decompress after like, I mean, you run a team, you are starting a brand new program. Like, why do you think it's so helpful for you? because it helps me shut my brain off. Like, I'll be honest, like I don't actually care about what celebrity is married to who, you know, like I don't care about that kind of stuff, but it helps my brain shut off at the end of the day. I don't have to think about work or think about like this stressor or, you know, everything else. I just get to just enjoy somebody else's like drama and just, I don't know. It's just fun. You're able to like disconnect. Yeah. Have you noticed, like, as you were building your business, like, in with the switch, because transitions are really hard, like, that you are needing more and more time to do that for yourself? So I would say since becoming a mom and, like, because I was really good at not watching too much TV. Like, I'm like, oh, weekends only type of thing. And so lately, like, at the end of the day, 
whenever I'm trying to like either fight with my son to get to sleep or things like that, I will turn on TV just to kind of calm myself down. And like, I'll watch reality TV as like a, to help my anxiety, I think more than anything. Um, and I think that has helped, you know, I'm trying to think like trying to answer your question, but yeah, I would say since having my baby probably is like the, I've started watching TV more because you also sit around a lot and I feel really bad. Like I'm the type of person that if I'm not like getting things done, I feel guilty. And so having like that stress and that anxiety of feeling guilty, but I can't really do anything about it because I literally have a baby that I need to feed or to take care of. I turn on, like I've already watched the whole 10 seasons of Friends again since I had the kid, you know, because it just helps me just kind of take my mind off of the anxiety that I have of not being as productive, I think. That makes sense. And you're working on that, right? Of like not feel, having to feel productive. Yeah. Then. Yeah, absolutely. Since we built my schedule together, it's been so nice because I've only, like, I only work certain tasks. So instead of like, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'm trying to get as much done as humanly possible every single day. I'm like, okay, I know that Monday is like these specific things and then I'm good. I, I don't need to work on everything else, right? And so it's like having a very specific task list every single day has kind of helped me to like not feel as unproductive, I think is the words. I'm terrible with language. So if I get words wrong, like just bear with me. Yes, fine. So being a brand new mama, transitioning your coaching to a whole new thing, like that's a lot in one year, right? Like that's a lot of changes. That's a lot of newness. Like, you know, other coaches, even if they're not moms, even if they're not, you know, changing their business, but they're just starting their business and all, you know, you and I know all the, all that comes with that. Like, how do you kind of of like, where's your mindset at and how do you kind of like lead yourself through all of that so um my mindset it's funny when i coach students um in an lca i always say i'm like i'm not like a, a mindset like lazy type of person i'm a mindset of like suck it the f up you know what i'm saying like um but i just give myself a lot of tough love i guess more than anything and i think it's good and bad um but recently like especially the first maybe two to three months of having ransom of having my son i struggled really hard like mentally and like mindset wise like i know i used to talk to you like i've talked to you about it um i mean i've talked to lacy about it and you know things like that so i would struggle really hard and i started you know going back to my old mindset things of or you know mindset practices of like affirmations i'm a big affirmation person um a big like not necessarily breath work but taking moments even if it's like five minutes just to kind of like pause breathe say a few affirmations to myself like i can do hard things or um life happens for me like those are my top two and so i kind of recycle those in my brain whenever things get really difficult and it helps me kind of like calm down i guess so oh, i love that i think it's important that's another reason why i wanted you on here because you are a good example mm -hmm. of tough love, like, you know, with, you know, in full circle energetics and like multiple people we've had on this episode, there is a little bit, everybody can take from every guest or every episode. And I do want you guys to have like grace and discipline, right? Like M has a lot of discipline. I mean, you don't do what you do in the military with your business, with your son, if you don't have discipline. And I think you're a good example of a mix of it all right like sometimes we lean too much on grace sometimes we lean too much on discipline but i think for entrepreneurs who who are listening to this like sometimes it is just hard and that's just you have to move through that kind of thing yeah i would say um especially after like going i know i'm not as active in your group chat i read everything i'm gonna tell you it's hard to text with a baby in your hand i'll be honest but um picking out like my word for the year because i know that's something that you kind of like talked about um it what it is alignment i feel like alignment is really important for me because like i've gone through such a huge shift season wise like everything's changed and so trying to find what works best for me there but also um a word that i'm like adopting i think that's 
correct terminology is surrender because I am someone who's very big on discipline. Like, I mean, I'm in the military, like I grew up in a very, very disciplined household. So I'm very good at that self-discipline aspect, but the season I'm in right now, I think it doesn't need the self-discipline as much. And so I'm trying to lean into like the surrender a little bit more to just kind of surrendering to like the new circumstances, surrendering to my productivity levels being different even my workouts looking completely different like everything's so different so that's kind of like the word that I'm adopting and I guess with that it's just like you go through so many different seasons in your life it's a matter of like recognizing are you in the tough love season or like you said in the grace season oh my gosh I love that surrender is such a good word and it's such a hard word I think for all of us entrepreneurs like surrendering is really challenging I was on I went on Sunday to have you ever done gong like a gong meditation, like with the, ping, yeah. you know what I'm saying? They just like the big giant gongs. I haven't been to one, but I can imagine what you're saying. Okay. Like, one, find one in your area and go. It is amazing. It's kind of like going to a breath work meditation kind of thing, but they do just the gongs. You like put an eye mask on and you just sit there and let the gongs play. I feel like it like vibrates your body. Yeah. Like you feel the vibrations and you hear all these sounds. It's wild. And the whole time I was like, you fight it. Right. And like, I feel like it's such like you fight the meditative state or you fight like what's to come. And I kept saying surrender to this process, like just let it happen. And I think that it's so funny. You said surrender because I think it is such a challenging word because as an entrepreneur, I mean, you're a mom, so it's like even next level, but you know, as an entrepreneur, you're like answering messages, getting on sales calls, making sure you put you're constantly in this, like, uh, like what's the word I'm looking for? Like action, action taking Mm -hmm. where you need to also know that in those like surrendering moments, you're like almost teeing yourself up better for those action taking moments. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever I have time to like the way I have my schedule worked out, which you would know, it's like when my son naps is whenever I get the most done. So it's like, I surrender in the times that he's awake and needs my attention because he's also teething. So it's, I can't just stick him in front of a, you know, in front of the TV. And I don't want to be that parent that just like sticks in front of the TV all the time. Like I want to have that intentional time with him and not feel guilty. That's like, that's something I had to remind myself is like, why did I want to work from home in the first place? Cause I, could just stay active duty in the military and it'd be fine but it's because I wanted to be home with my child and I had to ask myself like what did that look like right does it look like me being glued to my computer and just trying to like you know push him off or does it look like me being able to spend time with him and being like that person in his life like his best friend which I know that's corny but my son will be my best friend he doesn't have a choice Uh, (laughs) but I had to like kind of look at what I like what I was wanting and so having those moments of surrender when I'm with him and you know spending time with him playing with him being a little bit more active with him I'm way more productive when he is sleeping right because I can just like get right to it get it done um and the days my husband's home like on Saturdays I can get a lot accomplished like in the morning in a good chunk and it's been working fairly well I will say like cross my fingers so far. So good. That is good. And like that's so challenging because I feel like I'm, I'm sure, and this is probably something you cover too in your MILF program, right? Like moms constantly like w- not surrendering to that time where it's like, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense for you to try to do something right now. Right. Kind of thing. And uh, really struggling with like creating that time. And I think that kind of goes back to though, like the self-discipline, it takes self-discipline to surrender and it takes self-discipline to take action after the surrender. It's kind of like always there. Yeah. I would say like, from what I've noticed too, from moms and even for myself, um, you know, in the beginning, it's like, you're in this constant state. You just feel weird like you feel i guess anxious right like you're in a constant state of anxiety because when you are with him it's like or not even with him if you have a daughter with her right but like with whomever it's like you're always thinking about work but when you're working you're always thinking about how you're not with them spending time so you're just like 
in like that mom guilt phase, right? Where it's just like, you don't know how to feel because nothing is good enough, I guess. And so that's where I, one, like try to coach moms, but two, had to go through it myself where it's, you know, I had this intentional time where I 100% will focus on him and only him. And then that way I can be, you know, intentional with my with my business and i was listening to a podcast actually i love podcasts and there was this story that i kind of heard where it was like a nanny who used to watch um one family that the mom was like in corporate and she worked all the time but when she came home she devoted you know the little bit of time that she had solely to her child wasn't on her phone wasn't watching tv and then the other family where like the mom was home all the time and like the kids just you know watch tv they were on their phone they didn't have any intentional time and the the family that had the stronger bond was the mom that worked more hours and was gone more but she had that intentional moments because you kind of take for granted when you work from home right like you're together all the time but you don't have that intentional time so listening to that that's where i kind of planned my hours of like i will be intentional here and then i will work here I love that. That's amazing. And like, it's just comes back to that word intentionality, right? Like, even if you don't have a child and you and your partner work, both work from home, like you're like, we're here together all the time, but you're really not because your energy is going to different things instead of that intentional time together. That actually makes so much sense. That's one of the reasons why me and Austin have committed to no TV Monday through Friday, because we noticed that we would be like, let's just turn the TV on. We're hanging out, but it's not intentional time because we haven't had a conversation. We ate our dinner and then we would like turn the TV on. And then we would wonder why we felt so like far away from each other. And, um, we were like, this is a problem. Like we need to have more intentional time and even like for the weekends and stuff. And this kind of circles kind of un- unintentionally to energetic scheduling of being strategic with your time, because, you only have so much and you have certain values that you have to pour into. So it really does matter where that energy goes if you're trying to be more fulfilled. Absolutely. I feel like a lot of couples kind of, me and James, James and I, the right, have made, <laughs> I tell you guys, English, when I tell you I'm the worst, my husband will have regular conversations and I'll say like a phrase and he'll look at me, he's like, or a word. He's like, you want to try that again? And I'm like, <laughs> No, I don't want to try it again. What I said is what I said. Um, but what like we I think a lot of couples get into that habit where they just watch TV all week long and then they wonder why they're like they're not spending any time together. And I think that's too like with your business. Like, don't get me wrong, I will turn on the TV if I'm doing work that doesn't involve right. much brain power. But like for the people who maybe have other distractions going on. And they're not developed, like, I guess, devoting certain blocks of time to certain tasks. Like, you're not, it's not going to be done as well, I think, or as proactively at the same time, um, if you're kind of trying to focus on so many things at one time. Yeah. And coming from the woman who does a lot of things, like, M does a lot, right? Like, she's doing a lot. (laughs) Too much. You do too much. We're working on it. We're working on it. But she does a lot. But I mean, that's not to say she doesn't do them all well, because she is very intentional. Like she, she really, you give a lot to everything that you do. And I think that it just, you know, goes without saying that, like, it's because of that intentionality and that self-discipline and that, like, I have to show up here, um, that it makes a big difference. Is there like anything from like, the military or your life experiences that you feel like, have been so helpful for you as an entrepreneur? Oh, that's a great question. I mean, like I said, I grew up in a very, very, very disciplined household, very disciplined. Um, So like work ethic wise, like I grew up on a farm, you know, so like we had cows, chickens, pigs, goats, like all these things. And um, so I think work ethic wise, I got a lot of that from growing up. and then just being busy all the time. Like I, like I said in the beginning, like I was in college while I was still in high school. And so like, and then I was working on a farm and then I also worked for my mom a little bit. So it's like, I've always done multiple things and have had like lots of things on my plate. Um, 
I would say not necessarily like childhood or military helped me do this, but I've always been like, you know, big on scheduling. And I, even when I was in middle school, if I knew I had a lot to do, I'd say, okay, three o'clock, I'm getting home and I'm doing my homework at this time. I'm feeding the pigs at this time. I'm doing this at this time. Like I've always had my life mapped out by time. And, um, it's, I think it's a good thing, but it drives my husband absolutely nuts because he's a very free spirited type of person. He's like, when we get there, we get there. And I'm like, no, what time do we need to get there? 12. Okay. How long of a drive is it? 45 minutes. We need to leave by this time. We need to be getting ready at this time. Like that's how I plan everything. So I think just from having so many things on my plate and not really having a choice, but to schedule everything, Mm -hmm. um, military wise, I military has taught me to like, embrace the suck i think more than anything um because i mean there's there's some really great things in the military i've made really great friends um and it's really great to see everybody going through a very like sucky situation like the helo dunker or things like that and even if you don't know each other you just kind of like bond together um and so i think that's very special about the military and so it's just kind of a matter of like embracing that suck and pushing through things that are like that i'm terrified to do or that like i'm very anxious about i'm like okay like if i can do this like i can do just about anything that's kind of how the military's helped me i think form who i am no i think that's so true i like i i you know something i say to the students all the time like you've been through way harder things than this Mm -hmm. way like this is nothing. Yes, this is hard, but you've been through probably way harder things emotionally, physically in your life. Like you can do this hard thing. And I think that's a really good thing too. Cause like, you know, I try to, you know, I'm not anti-grind, right? Like I'm, I'm just like, be smart. Don't be dumb. Like don't work harder for no reason. Like be smarter about it. And so I think that's a beautiful way to capsulate it. Also, when you said, have you seen those TikToks or reels? And you're like, I would love to be go with the flow, but also like, what time are we leaving? Yes, I can't. I promise you, I'm a time. Per- That's why I get anxiety hanging out with like big groups of people. Like at like NLCA Live, it was fine because like I make I made zero plans. I went in with the mindset of I'm just gonna do what everybody else is doing. But if like I'm on a mission and we have certain things we got to do, certain times we have to be, I'm just, or on my own vacation with James, I get so anxious because there's just like too much we want to fit in. And I'm like, I don't know how we're gonna get it all done. I don't know how we're gonna do this. And I, yeah, like time, I live by the clock, which I think is good and bad. Like there's moments that living by the clock is good. And then other times it definitely, be by dating James. Like I have been able to, we'll go on like vacation to New York or something and he'll try to plan things. And I would say, listen, if we start planning things, you're going to be on a vacation with a woman you don't like. So we need to like have zero plan and just go with the flow and that'll be best. So I grew up, this, I, my dad is very much like growing up um, I've, I've posted this on my story before because I have a lot of trauma around time. And I think that's why I, I am really good at scheduling because of the trauma around time, like growing up, like if I asked my dad, where are we going? He'd be like, you find out when we get there, what time do you think we'll get there? You'll find out when we get there or we'll get there when we get there. Stop. You know, it'd be like, stop asking me questions kind of thing. And my dad like plans nothing. Like he's favorite place in the whole wide world is Mexico. He just like, goes to Mexico and then no. he's just doing his thing in Mexico. And like, so growing up, I was always anxious too around like, I don't know what's going to happen. Like everything was always unprepared. I'd be like, so what shoes? Cause my parents were divorced. So I'd be like, what do I bring? He's like, just bring clothes. And I would okay. be like, <laughs> flip flops, sneakers, like jacket, like all these things. So I had to learn to embrace like literally whatever's going to happen is going to happen to and also like okay i also realize i really love the stability of time and knowing my day from start to finish where my dad my dad is also a projector but he's a three five projector and three fives are the great life experimenters and they just kind of live this more messy lifestyle i think ransom's a three five if i remember correctly let me pull it up let's see 
Yes. After learning about this stuff with you, I tell you, like I have been dissecting my son who doesn't even really have much of a personality yet. And so I'm like, <laughs> I'm dissecting him and I've been dissecting my husband. I was like, oh, hey, this is why, like, you can overreact sometimes. Like, this is why this you're is allowed to reover. I also, I haven't, I need to send you our next session. I'll talk about our, your profile because you're a 6'2 and there's actually a lot to a 6'2. Where I think you sent me ransoms. Mm -hmm. He's a generator. And he's a three five. Oh, he's a three five. Okay, he's the great life experimenter. His life's gonna be messy. It's gonna be a roller coaster. Up It'll down anxiety. all over the place. Uh, you're a six two. That that two makes so much sense for you, M. The six is the role fop, role model. The two is the um the hermit and M. <laughs> is hermit. such the hermit she's like love you or you're amazing here's how you do things i'm gonna be on my couch or i'm gonna be with my husband at the beach don't bother me kind of thing um so i can see that perfectly <laughs> but three fives are like messy in a good way like ransom will only learn through experiences and failing and um which won't be fun for you as he's growing up, obviously. <laughs> I know, I know. That's why I wanted, like, that's why I wanted to learn so much more about it. And I, like, I know people want to learn for them, their own selves, but like kind of trying to understand him more. I, so one time I've gone into therapy a couple times, but um, one time my therapist told me while I was pregnant, but she's like, no matter what, you will always give your, child some sort of trauma like there will always be some sort of childhood trauma so you working so hard to prevent that is like almost impossible it's like an impossible task but i want to know his human design so that way i give him as little trauma as possible because i'm like <laughs> no i get it i think our generation is because like our parents didn't understand don't under didn't like learn what trauma was or how like you know the things we're traumatized by by our parents they don't think is traumatizing mm -hmm. right we now know what trauma is so like i feel like all millennials with their kids like my sister is like i cannot traumatize colson like i cannot allow for this you know and i'm like everybody has like it could be traumatizing to colson that you don't let him do anything because you're scared he's going to be traumatized like you know there's just like there's no win win here my sister and i we always send each other funny like TikToks and stuff back and forth. She sent me a TikTok the other day and it was like this girl and it said, um, you know, like talking to your mom about like the childhood trauma that you went through. And she's like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. It's like, that's because for me, it was like traumatic, but for you, it was a Wednesday. Yes. Like, <laughs> oh my God. Me and my sister send each other so much reels about trauma and we like laugh about our trauma so much because our par like our parents are so... <laughs> they're like that's not traumatizing or like you're ridiculous yeah like that one it was a Wednesday <laughs> yeah like that is my, what what was it I sent one the other day it was like to Alyssa oh my god it was so but she sends me ones all the time oh she always sends me the ones about like being the older sister and coming home and just creating conflict because you're the older sister and you were like always like when I come home like my mom always called me a bitch because I would like say, yeah like say things to her you know like say what I needed to say if she was being like in my eyes crazy in her eyes <laughs> normal right and so like there's like this one it's like the girl like flips her hair when the older sister's like coming home to wreak havoc at the house or something and Alyssa's like this is you you always disturb the peace and I was like <laughs> I will not let her get away with this shit. Well, we're better now. This was like a couple years ago, but it was, yeah. I love it's those. It's so funny. I think you and I are both brutally honest. Like I, I don't, I don't say, I don't call my parents. Like I, I don't say that kind of stuff, but I say things like, um, like driving over bridges. I actually, I personally have a massive fear of like driving over bridges. Um, like I get panic attacks if. Oh God, I am. Go over them. Like I have to like on our way to NLCA live we had to drive over the Buckman bridge with him if anybody knows anything about Jacksonville it's like very tall terrifying I'm literally gripping the steering wheel sweating and I'm like just breathing my husband never told me I didn't have time to prepare mentally oh, I just saw the bridge and I was like 
oh no but my mom used to freak out driving over bridges when we were kids and so that's kind of where i got it from but kind of going back to the the original topic my mom always told me she's like i had this game plan that like if you guys like if we were to fall over a bridge and i had to save all you guys i would let your like sister out and then i would um like put strap you to me and then grab your brother she had three kids three kids and she's like and we would all get out and i would swim to the top and i looked at my mom I was like mom i'm telling you after going through water survival school that's impossible you're not going to be able to do that like <laughs> she's like no i really will and i'm like no like <laughs> dreams crushed like it's not gonna happen that's how i am um i feel bad about it afterwards i was like well maybe she could like let's just simulate it please like so i can just see just but. practice my stepmom had that uh same fear we have this bridge in maryland that goes from maryland to delaware over the chesapeake bay and she it's not even that serious of a bridge but just the fact that it goes over the bay which is like pretty big mm-hmm. it ter- terrified her yeah. um so I was looking at the time okay so is there any last minute things that you would love to share just about your journey what you would say to women who maybe are in your shoes or are struggling to find that balance or yeah I would just love your thoughts Mm, I mean, if you're struggling, get help. Uh, Emily's fantastic. Um, Honestly, like she's changed my schedule for the best, especially kind of going through like all the different seasons I've gone through. Um, But I also would say like, try to recognize what seasons like you're in, if you are in like, especially if you're a manifesting generator and you like to take on so many things at one time, like try to recognize if you're in a season to take on so many things. I don't really know because I'm not like a bit like a pro at human design. I don't even know if it's possible for manifesting generators to kind of like pump the gas and pump the brakes and like see when they should really, you know, push for things or kind of take a step back. Um, But if you if that's what I've been trying to do is just recognize what season I'm in and knowing when I should be pumping the like gas or pumping the brakes um so that's yeah i think that would be like my recommendation yeah. for manifesting generators or for anybody yeah i think for anybody but also just to like speak to the human design piece it's going to be different per person like each manifesting generator is a different right but at your core you have energy that is that can sustain all these different things you want to do and you just need to use your gut to help you decide which is for you and what's not for you and if you have a defined root center that's the bottom square at the bottom of your body chart you have the ability like m has hers colored in you handle pressure well you are able to stay grounded in stressful situations and things of that nature but you can over that's when you pump when you pump the grass the gas too much when you have a defined root center that comes from conditioning right like emily said she's learning her own ways she's taking the time to figure out what expects for her alignment surrender so if you're like okay and if you have an undefined root center we're the most conditioned to use that uh, center when we shouldn't be using it because the way the world tells us we need to operate as entrepreneurs, as women, as people. So it's a great opportunity for you, even if you don't know your human design, just to get more connected with yourself and what your life looks like, how you respond to things, how you feel about things, and how the people in your environment uh, react to the way you are working, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I love it. I can listen to you talk about human design all day. It's like, it's like, I don't know if this is like a bad, like a, you know, um, R-rated podcast, but it's like, talk dirty to me. Like, tell me, <laughs> tell me all about it. Um, Cause I bought a book and it still makes so much more sense when it comes out of your mouth. I know I need to do more human design episodes, but I feel like they're, I, right now I'm only doing one episode a week. Let me know guys, if you want more episodes a week, because right now I'm only doing one and I feel like there's still so much I want to talk about, but I don't know if I could do two a week. I feel like talking to you about it, like in the calls that we've had, it's helped more than therapy. Like I've gone to therapy for quite a long time. And I think I've told you that before where it's just like, oh my gosh, I'm not screwed up. Like this is just how I'm meant to be. Like it's so refreshing. You're not screwed up. 
All right, guys, thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Emily, for coming on the podcast. It means the world. I love you so much. Um, you guys can follow Emily. I'll put all of her information in the show notes below. If you wanted to just tell a little bit about your new MILF program, um, and then we'll also put that in the show notes. If you want to just touch on that, we can add that in here as well. Yeah, so MILF in the making. Um I started it because who doesn't want to be a MILF, right? Um, and so it's really a program that's tailored more so towards moms, obviously, that are trying to navigate, like, obviously busy schedules, right? Like, we go in and do a little bit of, like, structure there, kind of trying to set more realistic goals, more realistic expectations. Um, we have, like, bi-weekly Zoom calls, so it's a lot more face-to-face. And we navigate the mindset struggles around it a lot more in depth. So like that mom guilt where you're, like I say, you either feel guilty about spending time with them, guilty about, you know, not spending time with them. And so it's like that constant battle between yourself. So mindset is like really heavily focused there on top of just like, you know, the normal nutrition, exercise, things like that. Love it. Love it. Well, we'll put the link for all of that in the show notes, guys. You guys can also just, if you are a mom and you're interested in working in a program like this, or if you are a fitness coach, obviously, and moms are not your forte, um, you can refer them over to M. I know for me personally, like I only work with females, so you naturally have moms if you only work with females. But I will say just from experience, and I've been a personal trainer for 11 years, and even when I was an in-person trainer, like it is really helpful for a mom to work with another mom because you just, you guys live in a different world than I live. Yeah. Yeah, When I became a mom, I'm like, holy crap. This is what they all complain about. (laughs) It makes so much sense. Different reality that I cannot comprehend. And I just live like y'all are wonder woman's for all that you do. Cause I just have banks and he's enough and he's a pain in my ass. So I couldn't even imagine. Um, But anywho, thank you so much. I hope you guys have an amazing day and I will talk to you soon. Bye.